This chapter will be a basic skills review. In this lesson, we're going to look at fractions and proportional reasoning. Hi everybody. So in this lesson, we're going to take a look at fractions and proportional reasoning. Okay? So, I mean, you're probably familiar with this at this point here. You know that this. Fractions are just a way of expressing something that's been divided into equal parts. Okay, we're looking at, at pieces of a, of a whole here. But we're chopping it up into these. And the denominator is telling you how many parts there are out of the total. Object into, and the numerator is how many of those pieces we have. Reducing fractions means that what we're going to do is we're going to write the fraction so that the numerator and the denominator um, don't have any common factors in them. We're going to remove the common factors. We're going to divide them out uh, from numerator to denominator. Okay, And that's we're going to get rid of them that way same number and we're going to do, keep doing that until we can't do that anymore. So let's just take a look at some examples so that you can kind of get used to how that's going to look. Okay, so here we go. So when we reduce fractions here, and the example we've got here is 8 twelfths. So our numerator is 8, our denominator is 12. And again, just to get a visual on this, what that means is we're we're dividing up, you know, our, our circle here or our like both of those numbers there, 8 and 12, we could write that as 4 times 2. And because there's a little bit of freedom with the operations here and the order that we do those in, I can actually do the 2 divided by 2. Uh, early on in this, and 2 divided by 2 is going to be 1 multiplied by 4 over 6. And so essentially, multiplying by 1 doesn't really change anything. So this expression here is really the same as 4 over 6. And then 4 over 6, we can do the same thing. 4 is divisible by 2, and so is 6. And once again, I've got this 2 divided by 2, and 2 divided by 2 becomes 1, because <coughs> I can do that, but we're done. Okay? So notice here, we could have divided the original numerator and denominator by 4. We could have gone right back up to the top of those 4s. Okay. So, yeah, you've got some options here as to how to do it. So let's just take a quick look at a, a small handful of examples here and keep us going through here. So 15 and 20. Now, I think it's pretty clear that, that 15 and 20 are both divisible by 5. So 15 is going to be 5 multiplied by 3. 20 will be 5 multiplied by 4. Again, because of... The 5 being a shared factor there. 5 divided by 5 is 1 times 9. 18 is going to be 3 multiplied by 6. And so I can cancel those 3s out. I'm left with 9 over 6. Now I look at those and think, okay, do 9 and 6 have any common factors? And the answer is yes, they're both divisible by 3. So this could be 3 over 3 times 2. And then the 3s cancel, and I'm left with 3 divided by 2. And 3 and 2 do not share anything in common, so that is as far down as I can go. Let's take a look at 0 here, because we know that those are going to be divisible by 5. So 55 is 5 times 11. Uh, 30 is 5 times 6. 5s will cancel. I'm left with 11, time, uh, sorry, 11 divided by 6. And, well, I could, I could do, I could divide them by, both by 2. 2 times 24. This is going to be 2 times 32. 2s will cancel, and I'm left with 24 over 32. It's going to be 2 times 12, 2 times 16. 2s are going to cancel, 12 over 16. I know that those are both divisible by 2. 2 times 6, 2, 2. 2 times 3, 2 times 4. 2s are going to cancel, and I'm going to get 3 quarters at the end. And then 3 quarters uh, won't the way down uh, to three quarters. Now, I could have done that a fair bit quicker, okay? But that's okay. I still get there.
right now, everybody, we're going to take a look at proportional reasoning, okay? Which is which is reasoning that uses fractions here, and you use proportional reasoning just all over the place here. Um, and you might not think about it, but like anytime you're in a store, for example, and you're you're looking at, they've got you know they've got some cans of beans, let's say, just for an example here, and you're looking at a smaller cans and bigger cans, and if you're better deal. You're, you're trying to use proportional reasoning there, okay? And so a proportion is when you've got fraction equal to fraction. Okay, that's it. There's nothing else added on, okay? It's just very simply this, just fraction equal to fraction. That's a proportion. And typically, one of these is going to be an unknown. I'm going to know one of the fractions, okay? And I'm going to have a missing, it doesn't really matter. So what do we do typically? And, and usually it's cross multiply and divide. It's not always cross multiply and divide, but more more often than not it is. But let's just take a quick look at an example here. So let's say we've got this is going to be equal to x divided by 20. So we, we've got something, for example, I don't know, let's say we've got a mixture of nuts, almonds, okay? Uh, so that's, that's true of the mixture. And maybe let's say now we've got 20 kilograms of that are going to be equal to almonds. So three out of four... Uh, is the ratio of almonds to the whole package. Well, if I've got 20, then how much is that x there? So one way to go about doing this is we can multiply 4 times x, and we're going to multiply 3 times 20. Okay? And what should happen there with each of those pairs there, and again, we're, we're doing it like this, multiplying across, diagonal across. So 3 times 20 is going to equal... 4 times x. That is one of the properties of these proportions that that equality, I should say, holds true. So that means 60 should equal 4x. So now, what I've got here is I know that 4 multiplied by something is equal to 60. Okay? Well, that should mean then that if I divide both sides of this equation by 4, 4s will cancel. So I just get 1 times x on this side. So there we go just x, and then 60 divided by 4 is 15. In this particular case here, if these two fractions are equal to each other, 3 quarters is equal to something over 20, that something must be 15. Okay, and that's that's how we're going to uh, basically approach these, these questions that deal with proportional reasoning. Let's take a look. All right, now let's take a look at some examples. Like it says here, we're going to solve for x and round to the nearest tenth where necessary. So here we go. 10 thirds is equal to x over 21. So we are going to multiply across the equality. So 10 times 21 will be 210. And 3 times x will be 3. Unknown is equal to 210. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3. Now the 3 over here, 3 divided by 3 is 1. 1 times x is x, so that's good. And 210 divided by 3 is going to be 70. So our answer there is going to be that x should be equal to 70. Now, I know that again, 6 elevenths is equal to x over 4, so we are going to multiply across the equality sign like that. So 6 times 4 is 24. 11 times x is 11x. Okay, I can't actually multiply that, so I'm just going to write it out, write out the multiplication, so I know that that's what's supposed to happen there. And then I will divide both sides by 11. And now in this case here, this is, the question says round to the nearest tenth where necessary. And so, turns out this is going to be approximate, so it's not an exact answer. I know that it's just, it's just close, and that rounds to 2.2. Multiplying again along the diagonal. So 7 times x will be 7x. 12 times 2 will be 24. 
And just in case someone wonders here, it doesn't matter what side of the equal sign you put those on. Uh, the equality means one side is equal to the other, and it doesn't matter what, what order that, that shows. I'm going to divide by the coefficient of the x. Again, that becomes 1 times x on the left-hand side. And now 24 over 7, well, that's not going to be an exact number, so I'm going to say approximately, and it turns out that that's approximately when you round that to the nearest tenth. Kind of like that, that worked out nice. 6 over 11 and 0 0.5, but it's close. It's going to round to 0 0.5. So again, with the approximate symbol there. And then down here, our last couple of examples here, 18 over 1 is equal to 7 over x. I'm going to multiply along, multiply along. So 1 times 7 is 7, 18, and just approximately 0 0.4. Not exactly, I have to round it. And then this one over here, it's going to be 180 over 2 is equal to x over 1, which means 180 multiplied by 1, just 180, will equal 2 multiplied by x, 2x. And I'm going to divide both sides by 2. Now in this case, I don't need to use that little dot on top because it's not approximate. 180 divided, again, it's, it's just showing you that isn't, isn't uh, going to do everything. You're going to have to go through and do some examples to really get a sense uh, of how this works. The more comfortable you are with the, the factors of numbers and multiplying in your multiplication tables there and whatnot,